All right, guys, we're back again. I actually said in the last one that I, I didn't think that uh, you'd see another one for about a week. I mean, I'm still waiting on the uh, the LED grow lights. Probably gonna add a fourth one now um, because of something I'm gonna show you today. And you know, there's not a lot of difference in uh, the planting. I mean, I showed this to you yesterday. Uh, there's some additions as I dug up one of my purple sweet potatoes. I brought in some clumps of the chart I talked about. There's one right there. I uh, had a little sprig of uh, Bloody Dock. That's that right there. Did, uh, <clears throat> wasn't real happy where it was somewhere else, so I brought it in. I have a pretty mangled looking bell pepper there. Uh, we threw in and we'll just see how it does. That's that's not really what I brought you on today to see though. Um, we we'll build a flow through wicking bed. And I figured this is the best time to show it because it's wide open. My buddy JR was just asking me how I'm doing these now. Now here's the thing. I'm doing this in miniature because it fits here and because I don't want to put another great big one of these giant things on for a temporary system. We'll grow some stuff with it. I haven't decided yet. I think micro greens, micro salad greens might be awesome here. Just like a mescaline mix or something. So harvest, so harvest, kind of flipping back and forth. Uh, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, micro green uh, uh, sunflower would be great here. All kinds of stuff we could do with it. But this is a miniature version of the big wicking beds that we have in there and the system that we're converting everything to. Now, <clears throat> let me just show you how this works and then it'll make sense when I explain how the other one works. All this is is a dirt excluder and uh, rock excluder. There's no dirt or rock in here yet. And then all this guy is is just a way to make sure that the water makes it to the bottom. So that'll be on there like that. You can just see we have, we're have we split off of there. We have water coming off the same pump that's running the ebb and flow bed. Probably running faster than we need to, honestly. We can back that down a little bit more even. We just want to have a flow through and therefore we have a filtration effect. So that goes down like that. Now normally, what we would have here is a stand-up pipe inserted in here. Let me show you what happened. If we have a flood. This is such a shallow tub, this little 14 gallon tub. I don't think we need very much water in it. So what I did is I took one of the uh, fittings that screw into the bulkhead that usually a stand up pipe would sit in right there. And even with no pipe in it at all, I, I felt it was holding too much water. It was holding about you know, that much water in the bottom of this tub. And you can see, you know, you're talking right about there. You've only got about that much out of the water. So. I took the bandsaw and I held it with a pair of vice grips instead of sticking my fingers that close to the freaking bandsaw and I bandsawed off the top of that fitting and now that fitting is what sets the level instead of a pipe. And again, a bigger system, we'd have a pipe. Now I could actually set it pretty high by just barely screwing it in or I could set it very low by screwing it all the way down, which I think is going to be about right. Well, this pipe in here even when it's full of dirt, I can stick my paw down in there and I can take that out if I want to bring it up higher and put one that's not been cut in. If I want it even higher, I have a little piece of pipe in there. And that's what you can do with your big system built out of beds like this, or usually we build them out of these 100 gallon tanks. And in those we hold about, they're two feet deep, we hold about seven inches of water in the bottom of them, and that's about a good distance to get wicking out of them. So that's just this in miniature. So what's next? We'll get some rocks, we'll fill all this in with rocks, and then a good organic potting mix. One thing you may want to do with your wicking beds is put, you know, some uh, cotton rope or cloth into the rocks and up into your media. That'll help wick, but at this distance, we're not going to need it. This will be plenty to do all the wicking we would ever need. And what we get now is we get the benefits of aquaponics and the benefits in soil in one. We're going to be running this fertile, fertile water through this system. We also get additional filtration. So we'll set the rocks up a bit higher, you know, probably about there. And we'll still get plenty of wicking action. I usually lay down a layer of perlite. I go rocks and I do a couple inches of perlite and then I do my dirt to keep everything separated. Given this is a temporary bed, it's going to be here for about three months and it's relatively small, it's going to be easy to move, disassemble and change and do something else with it. I probably won't do that here on a bigger bed. That's what I do. A lot of people do landscaping fabric. If I see some laying around or something, I'll do it when I put it together. Thing is, I can't build it out today. Um, I don't have any, any dirt for it. 
and it's pouring rain and muddy and nasty, so I don't want to try to mix anything up with what I've got out there. Uh, so I'm going to have to go to the store and get some uh, organic potting soil to fill this with. Given that's the case, I'll probably pick up a, a, a bag of uh, lava rock, and I'll use lava rock down there for all the, the wonderful things that it does as providing houses for bacteria. But if you've ever wanted to know how to build a, a, you know, a wicking bed attached to your aquaponics system, this is it. If you think about it, it's kind of the same material we used to build that bell siphon. Here's your siphon with no top on it because we do not care about any kind of siphon action. Here's your excluder, and now your excluder's sitting over top of your stand-up overflow, and whatever type of pot you put in here sets the level of your uh, wicking beds. And again, by using a big pipe like a forest pipe, we give them some grow space, but we can get our hand down in there, and we can pull that out, we can change it, we can do whatever we want to change the level of the bed. So, I think you start to see how this goes. Once you've got the heart of this system, you can just keep adding on and adding on. Now, if we wanted to add on a lot more, again, that's a pretty small pump. I'd have to upgrade it a little bit. I've got a bigger pump, but it's really oversized for what we're doing now. I've been thinking about dropping some stuff in over there. We'll see. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. i got some different ideas. Uh, but if you think about what we have now, the ability to do, we've got ebb and flow. We've got rafting. We've got rafting to root cuttings with as well. We've got ebb and flow to root cuttings. We've got a shallow wicking bed. We've got a little bit deeper of a wicking bed and stationary in, sitting in the water. We've got one we'll flow through. All off of one thing. It's everything that's in, it's, this is miniature of what's out there in a lot larger system. And what we're going to be building our big, huge system out of this uh, year is pretty much this, just blown up. It's that easy. We'll catch you later.